Today, we'll be hanging out in Hammersmith, London. During the 1960s. Between 1964 and 1965, there's been a few murders. Six to be exact, with the killer targeting prostitutes. They would be brutally murdered, but for some reason, the killer chose not to have sex with them. The victims would be found with ripped and torn clothing, exposing their breasts, coining the name Jack the Stripper. Welcome to Simply Told. the 17th of June 1959, on the north bank of the River Thames. Near Duke's Meadows, police officers were out on patrol. The area was well known as a lover's lane. Also known to be the spot local prostitutes would conduct their business. On that day, around 10 past 5 that morning, between Dan Mason Drive and the river, about 200 meters away of Barnes Bridge, patrolling officers discovered a body. No identity documents was found on the deceased. She was later identified as Elizabeth Fig. At the time of her discovery, Elizabeth's clothing was torn, revealing her breasts. Her underwear and shoes were also noticeably missing. Also, marks around her neck suggests her cause of death was due to strangulation. Autopsy revealed that Elizabeth died approximately three hours before her discovery. The search for any additional clues that could help close the case was underway. But the search would yield no results. None of Elizabeth's clothing were found. Police concluded that she must have been murdered in the car of her last client. As her clothing could have been removed in the car before she was murdered and disposed of. Witnesses from a bar located on the opposite side of the river claimed that around midnight, they noticed a car with its headlights on, as it stood parked in that general area. Shortly after the car's headlights were switched off, they heard a woman scream. The 8th of November, 1963. On Townmead Road, at Barnesborough Refuse Disposal Site. A woman's body was found. Her name was Gwyneth Rees. Except for the one stocking still on her right leg, she was found completely naked. Workers at the site had accidentally decapitated her, while attempting to level out the refuse. The 2nd of February 1964, just below Linden House, by the Corinthian Sailing Club, the body of another young woman was found. Her name was Hannah Tailford. She was murdered with most of her teeth knocked out, or at least missing, with her underwear found stuffed in her mouth. The 8th of April 1964, on the Thames, not far from where Hannah was found, lay the remains of Irene Charlotte Lockwood. She was pregnant at the time of her death. The 24th of April 1964, at the rear of 199 Boston Manor Road. The body of Helen Catherine Barthelemy was found in an alleyway. Specks of paint, primarily used in autobody repairs and or vehicle manufacturing, was discovered at the crime scene and collected as evidence, leading detectives to conclude that the killer was employed in this field. The 14th of July 1964 just outside 48 Berrymead Road, in Chiswick, the body of Mary Fleming was discovered. Again, paint spots was discovered on the victim. Residents remembered hearing a car back up fast, moments before Mary was discovered. The 25th of November 1964, in a parking lot on Horton Street, Kensington, the body of Frances Brown was discovered. She'd been strangled. Frances was last seen on the 23rd of October, as she climbed into her client's car. Her colleagues gave the police a description of the driver, and the car he was driving. 
believed to be a Ford Zephyr. The 16th of February 1965. Behind the Heron Trading Estate. Near a shed, the body of Bridget O'Hara was discovered. She'd been missing since the 11th of January. Like before, specks of paint was found on Bridget. It was later traced to a transformer near to where she'd been discovered. Scotland Yard detectives interviewed close to 7,000 suspects. That summer of 65, police hit the jackpot when paint samples collected from different victims perfectly matched a concealed transformer found at the rear of the building on the Heron factory estate. That factory was directly in line with a spray paint shop. Chief Superintendent John Du Rose held a news conference and falsely announced that they had narrowed down their suspects, stating that they had 20 suspects, which was slowly being eliminated from the investigation. Later he announced that the police eliminated half of that, leaving them with 10 suspects, followed with an amended total of only three suspects. Detectives determined the killing stopped after these announcements were made. Kenneth Archibald, a 57-year-old caretaker employed at Harrod Park Lawn Tennis Club, handed himself over to the police and confessed to murdering Irene Lockwood. Kenneth stood trial on June 1964. When asked how he'd plead, he responded with, not guilty, retracting his original confession. With no hard evidence to pin Irene's murder on him, there was no case. On the 23rd of June 1964, the jury found Kenneth Archibald not guilty. Another suspect on Scotland Yard's radar was Mungo Ireland. He landed on the suspect list after Bridget O'Hara's murder. With spots of paint found at the crime scene, detectives traced the paint back to Heron Trading Estate, where Mungo worked at a security guard. Later, Mungo Ireland leaves a note for his wife, saying, I can't stick it any longer. He continues, To save you and the police looking for me, I'll be in the garage. Mungo then commits suicide by carbon monoxide poisoning. With all this happening, Detectives believed they had their suspect. But later research would place Mungo Ireland in Scotland at the time of Bridget O'Hara's murder, eliminating him as a suspect. After Mungo Ireland's death, the murders stopped. July 1972, Peter Neal, a freelance journalist, states that he had obtained confidential information from a chief inspector pointing the finger at boxing champion, Freddie Mills as the killer. In the West End area, it was considered common knowledge, with people usually saying, Oh Freddie did them in. But Freddie Mills had already taken his life back in July, 1965. These allegations would be presented to the investigating officer, who respond by stating, that Freddie Mills was never considered a suspect. David Seabrook wrote in his book, Jack of Jumps, that a police detective was considered a suspect. And this info came from senior detectives working the case. Tommy Butler. In their book, The Survivor, Martin Short and Jimmy Evans believed that Superintendent Tommy Butler, from the Flying Squad was the man behind it all. But Tommy passed away in 1970. Another theory was that Harold Jones, who was convicted for the murders of two girls, in 1921. He was only 15 years old at that time. And because of his young age, he escaped the death penalty, receiving a life term instead. Due to good behavior, he was released early from prison, at the age of 35. His MO matched that of the stripper murders. Brutal killer, that never partook in any sexual activity with his victims. Harold Jones died in 1971. January, 2019. Police re-examines Harold Jones as a possible suspect. They compared Harold's methods as a teen, with Jack the Stripper's methods. The police responded, saying that there are many similarities in their methods. 
The case remains unsolved.